Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and today we are taking a look at the Caradron Overlord's Sky Vessels. And this one is going to be a little bit more of a hardcore math hammer for you guys. I know you've been chomping at the bit for that. So here we go. This is a look at the firepower on the Ironclad. We have several different weapons options for their main gun. We either have the Great Sky Cannon, which has two different shooting attacks it can make. It can either shoot shrapnel at 24 inches or the shell at 30 inches, the Great Sky Hook, or the Great Volley Cannon. And so the way I've laid this out is just to demonstrate the range of each weapon, the number of attacks that you're getting with each hit, wound, rend, damage, and then to calculate the damage output, I'm assuming that whatever it's shooting at has a 4-up save. So that comes up with these damage output numbers. So you'll see here that the Great Volley Cannon is your most powerful weapon for the primary gun. However, it's only an 18-inch range gun, which is very short compared to some of your other options. Personally, I would go with the Great Sky Cannon, because it gives you that flexibility of either shooting the shrapnel, which is you know, less than the Great Volley Cannon in damage, but is still your second highest damage is pretty close to the volley cannon. Um, and then you also have the option of shooting the shell if you have something at long range that you need to try and hit. Um, and that has a 30 inch range. So I think the flexibility there is really good and I'd prefer the longer range. Now the great sky hook that does the same damage as the great sky cannon shell. It, has another ability that I believe it improves your charges uh, when you shoot it. Um, overall, I don't think the Great Sky Hook is really that good of a choice when you have the Great Sky Cannon Shrapnel at uh, the same range that does significantly more damage. Then going down further, we've got our Ether Shock. Torpedoes, that's another 24-inch weapon uh, that is putting out a decent amount of damage. And then our ether shot Carbines, which are our close-range weapon. Um, they're 12-inch guns, and they are overall our single most damaging weapon. So you'll really see here that we're trading off range for firepower basically throughout the... Uh, attack profiles here. Now, I just want to explain the last two columns real quick and in general what those are talking about. So the second to last column that is really more of a calculation that is I've been taking into account for the math hammer of other troops, but that's just looking at what is going to fire at greater than nine inches. So in other words, things that you'll be in range if you uh, use the fly high ability and come down just outside of nine inches of the enemy. Uh, and then the greater than 12 inch is the one all the way over to the right. That is really looking at like long range shots. So for that one also, I wanted to you know, calculate out what the uh, Great Sky Cannon with Shrapnel looked at. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that it totals out what the total damage output is of that particular profile. And then the next one down is damage per point. So that is just taking the damage output and dividing it by the 510 points of the Ironclad. And that's to be able to compare kind of apples to apples with other units and the other ships in, you know, for this particular analysis. So in a vacuum, 
Um, those numbers don't make a lot of sense. Um, but what I can tell you is that the damage output of 0.02 is pretty solid overall for um, what we see in Caradron Overlords. It's a little bit on the low side, um, but as we see moving on through the uh, other ships, um, that this is actually the most damaging of the ships and the most cost efficient one. So up next we have the Arcanaut Frigate and here we have the heavy sky cannon with the shrapnel and shell options both again um, 24 inches and 30 inches respectively and then we have just the heavy sky hook option and then our ether shot carbines that come along with uh, whatever version uh, we happen to be running. Uh, definitely here again, you'll see that the heavy sky cannon is really going to be your choice for higher damage. We don't have a volley gun option on this particular ship. So uh, you know, your shrapnel shot is going to definitely be what's doing the most damage. And you'll see here that comparatively, uh, here we have... Uh, 0 0.0178 uh, damage per point on our greater than 9 inch column. That is definitely less value than what you're getting out of the Ironclad. And we're going to compare them a little bit more further on down the line. But here you see that we get less of a drop off by looking at the uh, greater than 12 inch mark um, by losing our carbines. So we don't have as big of a hit there as we do with the ironclad by losing those. And finally, we got the Grunstock gun hauler. Once again, we got the sky cannon both shrapnel and shell versions. Uh, this is exactly the same as the frigate, except the ranges are both six inches shorter. Uh, and then we've got the drill cannon, which is less damaging, but is a powerful 36 inch shot. So that is an interesting option. Um, personally, I would still stick with the sky cannons though. Um, and we get two shots with either shot carbines. And you'll see that this one, as far as damage per point, this is even lower than the frigate. Um, and there's some additional utility to taking a gun hauler. But in terms of firepower, this is actually one of the weakest things in terms of firepower per point in the whole book. Um, so it's not really an optimal choice if you're looking to put out as much damage as possible. So let's just do a quick comparison of these and, uh, you know, the other important factors that we have here on these ships. So points wise, we have a pretty big variance here. The ironclads 510, the frigate is 250 and the gun hauler is 150. The frigate and gun hauler both move 12 while the ironclad moves 10, which is still definitely fast and respectable. Uh, the ironclad has 18 wounds, 14 for the frigate and 12, I'm sorry, 10 for the gun hauler. And it's worth noting here that the gun hauler does not have a wound chart. So its movement does not change as it takes damage and its ability to carry troops doesn't change as it cha takes damage and it can fly high um, regardless of how much damage that it has taken. Um, it's also worth noting here that the frigate and gun hauler both have four up saves whereas the ironclad has a three up save. So taking down that ironclad uh, with a three up save and 18 wounds is that is a task to take that thing down 
So our Ironclad can hold up to 25 models total. Um, it's overburdened if it's more than 15, so it won't be able to fly high and it will have its movement halved. Um, there is that asterisk, though, for the Ironclad that we can take the Ebullient Buoyancy Aid. Uh, that's one of the engine works for the Ironclad. Uh, and it disregards that uh, overburdening of the ship. And you can take you know, the full 25 complement with no uh, penalty whatsoever. Um, the Arcanaut Frigate uh, you know, can take a total of 15 overburdened at more than 10. So that's definitely more restrictive as far as what you can do with carrying troops around. The nice thing really with the Ironclad is that you can put a unit of 10 in the Ironclad and then also have heroes in there or just a unit of 15 or, you know, you use the buoyancy aids and use a unit of 20 and then heroes. So the Arcanaut Ironclad gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of it being, you know, this big gunship. The frigate is... You know, it, it, just looking at the points difference, it really shows you that it's a smaller ship, it's a little bit faster, but its ability to carry troops and deliver firepower is definitely less than the Ironclad. Uh, and then the Gun Hauler ordinarily can't carry troops, but you can take Colebeard's collapsible compartments that lets you carry up to five, which is a really interesting choice. It gives you kind of like this uh, little ship flying around that can lay down a decent amount of firepower and really harass the flanks of your enemy or get in the way, variety of different things. Um, you know, despite the gun hauler being not that great in terms of damage output, it has a lot of utility uh, because it can fly high, regardless of how many wounds it's taken. So it's extremely mobile. You know, you can still have your engine riggers hitch a ride with it when it flies high. It can, you can take the compartments and, you know, bring a unit of five Thunderers with you. So it really has, like, it's a piece that I really like in an army. Um, I've been a big fan for a long time of um, having like a hero that is that has like high damaging capability for how expensive it is and have it be very mobile. Uh, I did that for a long time playing Free Guild with. Uh, originally, it was a Bretonian Lord on a Pegasus, and then that got thrown in the compendium, so then it was a uh, Free Guild General on a Pegasus, and that got compendiumed, so I'm uh, kind of in the market for uh, that kind of role, but I think that's the sort of role that the Gun Hauler really plays, that it's a relatively small, non-threatening piece that can do a lot of damage, um, but is not going to be the main focus of your opponent, um, you know, your opponent's attacks. That's going to kind of be like a, a side party going on, and they may kind of disregard it because it's not the big threat of, say, a full ironclad with a complement of Endrin riggers hanging out with it. Um, I think it's just a good play to have one in your list. Now, another important thing to mention here, I've talked a little bit about the Endrin works. The Ironclad has a bunch of really good options for Endrin works, and so does the Gun Hauler. The ones for the frigate are fucking terrible. <laughs> so that just kind of compounds the frigates being like the redheaded stepchild of uh, the Sky Vessel fleet. I really feel like you want to go ironclads and gun haulers. 
I know there have been people that have had some success, uh, particularly with the battalion where you take two frigates. Um, you know, dividing up your fire is certainly something you can think about doing. You know, running two frigates each with ten thunderers in them uh, and coming at your opponent from multiple different directions is definitely something to play around with and think about. Uh, but I think, overall, it feels right to me to run, you know, an Ironclad as your main ship, kind of your Death Star, your Battlestar Galactica, and uh, also have, like, a gun hauler hanging out and harassing your opponent. So that's just kind of the quick and dirty math hammer on the ships. I'm going to go through all of the units soon as well. Uh, this was just a quick and dirty one that I could throw together because it's just really three war scrolls. Uh, but, you know, it, just the, the general summary here, it, the size of these things correlates with their points efficiency for their damage output. Um, I think, in general, your Ironclad is your all-around best choice. Um, gun haulers definitely have a good role to play. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out frigates. I'm not a big fan right now, but certainly playtesting and theory hammering on those some more could certainly change my mind. Um, they just feel like they're kind of... They're... They're, they're like the seers of the uh, skyship world, right? Like, they they don't really do anything in particular that is extraordinary, right? Like, they're not beating you on price. They're not beating you on quality. They're not doing a lot of different things. There's nothing really setting them apart, um, so to speak, from other brands. <laughs> so, they're... They're just kind of stuck in the middle, and uh, I don't know. I'll have to play around with some lists and see what it looks like, but I think for now I'm probably sticking with Ironclads and Gun Haulers. So that's it for now, guys. Uh, don't forget, as always, to like, share, subscribe, etc. And don't always forget, we got our Patreon down below as well, if you care to donate to the cause. So... That is it for this one. I will talk to you all later, and we'll have the big math hammer of all of the troops coming up real soon.